Welcome to the Oracle Database World. This is Justin, and in this Oracle Database YouTube video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to write an S a PLSQL program which prompts a user for input. Now, I'm asked this by many, many people. Okay, many, many frustrated DBAs come to me and they say, Justin, <laughs> we have a very annoying problem. We, we're Oracle DBAs, and, with, and we're, we also have programs in other languages. C, Java, Corn Shell Scripting, uh, Bash Shell Scripting, Perl, things of that nature. And each of these languages have something in common. They allow us to prompt the user for input when they run the program from the console. The console usually being the operating system prompt. I said, okay. And then they would say, well, PLSQL, the console basically is the SQL plus prompt, right? And I say, yes, absolutely. And I say, well, we want to be able to pass the for the PLSQL program to prompt the user for information. How do we do so? Well, you know what? There's an answer I give them, and I don't like it. The answer is, you can't. You cannot. That is because PLSQL was not designed to be an end-user programming language. It is a server programming language. It is designed to work with the Oracle database and to work with Oracle database objects on the server side. Now, there's usually a front end like uh, that, that was created with Oracle Forms or something like that, okay, that can interact with it or Java program or something. However, PLSQL is just not meant for that. Typically, what you would do is you would have it be a two tier environment. You would, you want to, if you want to, you don't have to use PLSQL for everything, okay? There are other programs out there, Java and, and C and everything, where you, you can use. Um, <clears throat> libraries to communicate, or APIs, I should say, to communicate with the Oracle database. For instance, Java has the JDBC, Java Database Connectivity Driver. Okay, so you can, you can, um, can, you can utilize APIs, and they have one for all major languages. C has one, too. So you can use one for all major languages and communicate totally written in, on the, on the uh, client side. The, the problem with that method is that, is that the code is stored on the first tier, the client tier, okay, on the client system, whether it's a web server that clients are connecting to and users are connecting to through a thin client, a web browser, or it is an application that they had a standalone app that they have installed on, and they're running it locally on their on their uh, laptop. Either way, they're passing code over the net into the database, and the database has to process that every time. Okay, it can be very inefficient. Okay, although a lot of things are a lot of uh, Applications are programmed that way. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that's the downside, okay? PLSQL, how, it was, how it's supposed to work is all the code that interacts with the database can be kept in the database itself, okay? And everything that interacts with the user, all the code that interacts with the user would be on the user tier. So basically, the only thing on the user tier, the only code that the user tier would need, Java or whatever, would be to gather all the user input and to form their, uh, their, their forms, generate their forms to be displayed to them. That's the only thing that needs to be done on their side. Once it gathers their input, it calls PLSQL programs uh, from the Oracle database, and then Oracle database executes. The program's already in the Oracle database, and the Oracle database calls them from the data dictionary because they're stored, like procedures and stuff, and it just executes all this PLSQL code and then returns the result to the end user Java program or, or what have you. So the only thing that the, the tier one in this environment is sent into the database server is the, uh, is the user input and the instruction on what to do, okay? All the instructions on what to do with the, on, on how to do it to the data and how to massage it and the if statements and everything else are handled on the database server itself via PLSQL. So that's basically how it's supposed to work. However, there is a way to get PLSQL, if you wanted to, to prompt for users, okay? And it's not really PLSQL, it's a little bit of a trick. You're using SQL plus too, but I'll show you. Now, before we get further, let's back up and let's talk about PLSQL. PLSQL is spelled PL forward slash SQL. And uh, it's procedure, it stands for procedural language slash structured query language. Now, PLSQL collectively, the whole thing, is proprietary and specific to the Oracle database. Okay, while SQL is a standard language used to modify, to uh, communicate with and 
we have a database, database software product, an RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. It's an industry standard. Okay, but PL is the add-on that Oracle added to SQL, and what PL does is it gives SQL Plus the ability to do if statements. Uh, I mean, condition testing with if statements, functions, uh, loops, you know, uh, um, things, things like that. So it makes SQL Plus to be like a, a regular procedural type language. Okay, most of the functions that you would see in any language, C, Java, Corn, a script, and Perl, whatever. Okay. Um, so that's basically what PLSQL does, okay, and what it is. If you think of it as the Oracle name, it's the focal point. All right, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, so let's go ahead and let's uh, write our program that prompts the user for input. Uh, I'm not going to go in SQL Plus like you think I am just yet. I'm going to use Notepad, and I'm going to create a program called input1.sql. Yes, okay, I want to bring my... Uh, file over here. Okay, and I'll write my first line of output. Since of input, since this PLSQL program is going to be displaying output, this is good. This is going to be an anonymous block. Since it's going to be displaying output, I need to use the SQL plus uh, setting set server output on. I also need to set I also needed to set set verify op. Okay, so this first set command here sets it so PLSQL can output to this console. The set verify off here tells uh, SQL Plus that, that when we work with variables, I don't want to see how the variables um, how the variables were replaced. Okay, and I know that may not make sense right now, but I'll, sh I'll we'll, once we have the program written and functioning, um, I'll remove that and you'll see what the difference is. Okay, next line is going to be Accept the underscore name prompt. Please enter your first name. Okay. Accept is a, these are all, all three of these are SQL commands because we haven't opened the PLSQL block yet with declare or begin. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. The accept command is an SQL plus command which um, prompts the user for input and the um, the, the string after accept, the word after accept is going to be the variable that we're going to store our input as, our input in. The prompt command is another SQL plus command, which just displays information on the screen, sort of like dbms underscore output dot put underscore line in PLSQL. Okay, but it's SQL plus's version of prompting the user for input. So, when you, so as you can see, what I said earlier that PLSQL plus does not have the ability to prompt the user for input is true. SQL Plus is doing it in this program. Okay? SQL Plus does have that ability. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna open our PLSQL block. Begin. And we're going to print a line using dbms underscore output dot put underscore line. And remember, it's the put underscore line procedure in the dbms underscore output package. And we're gonna say hello there. Ampersand the name. Okay. Then we're going to do end like this and we're going to execute our program. Okay. So this basically right here, this is our PLSQL plus program. Okay. And, um, and you're probably, and, uh, probably thinking, why am I doing this in a file? Well, I'm doing it instead of typing it in at the console like I did in the earlier videos. I'm doing that because um, once you type in accept, it's going to ask you for input even before you enter the PLSQL code. Okay, this, this will be a, a, stream, a, streamed, um, a streamed example. Okay, everything will just flow. Okay, you, you, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so we set server output to on so we can output. We set verify off, which I'll explain. We set a prompt to say, please enter your first name. So the program is going gonna, gonna, to um, say, please enter your first name. And the user is going to enter their name. And that's that. Whatever the user enters is going to be stored in the underscore name variable. Then we go on to PLSQL and we output, hello there, the name. That we're working with the value um, of the V, that we're working with the V underscore name variable that was set up here. So we do save, exit, 
type EIR input 1.sql to ensure the file is there, which it is. We do type input 1.sql to prove the CD uh, contents. And now we're gonna now we're gonna clear our screen. We're gonna set Oracle SID to finance. We're gonna ensure we're set properly properly. Sorry. We're gonna connect to our finance database by SQL plus. We have our SQL prompt. Show user to ensure we connect to the SysDBA, which we have. Select name from the dollar sign database to ensure if I type it right, that we connect it to the right database, finance. Now I'm going to execute this script. And you execute the script and, and you execute, you can execute um, external OS scripts. Scripts are uh, that are on the OS file system outside of, of, uh, of, of, of the data dictionary of Oracle by typing in the add sign, which means open the file name I'm about to tell you and execute what's in it. That's basically what that's what that says. So add sign, and we're going to type in the C colon input one dot SQL, and you don't have to put dot SQL because dot SQL is assumed, uh, but uh, we'll do it here. All right, so here we go. We executed our program, and it says, "Please enter your first name, Justin." Hello there, Justin. Okay, and it says PL SQL procedure successfully completed. All right, so we just saw how we can have PLSQL prompt the user for input. And it's kind of smoke and mirrors. Not, not really. It's a little bit of a fake out because SQL plus up here asked and then PLSQL displayed the value. Okay. But, uh, I mean, this, this is, there's millions of ways you can do without SQL plus what we just did. And this is an example that's not very useful. But I'm sure you can come up with 20,000 other, other ways uh, to use this. But this is just gives you the an idea of what the structure will be and, and how it works. Okay, let me, for those of you who don't know, let's open up our source code again, and let's and let's uh, let's disable this line set verify off by putting two hyphens, which um, which means that, that it's a comment. Okay, it's a remark. So PLSQL won't execute it; it will ignore it. Okay, save. Okay, so we turned off set verify off. Now we're going to execute the program and we'll see what that does. Add sign input one, execute the file input one. And then name Justin. See what it did? It said what the old value was, V underscore name, and it told us what it was going to change it to, Justin. Here it is, Justin, okay? Set verify off turns turns that output, that feedback off that says that that says uh, what the variable used to be called. Every time you work with variable substitution in SQL Plus, it's going to tell you what it used to be and what it is now. Okay, a little a helpful debug tool. Um, I don't know why it's default, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know it's it's annoying when you're running programs. So I just turn that off by typing in set verify off. Now when I execute it, it works fine. There it is. Hello there and make it. All right. That's how you have SQL, uh, PLSQL prompt the user for uh, input. And uh, it's a little bit of a smoke screen, but that's how you do it. Thank you.